Hello and welcome back. Today I just have a real quick video. I want to talk a little bit, of course, about different ways to use our braided wire creations. Um, we've kind of covered the pendants already. We've got our, I showed you these already, our by hand loose braid, and then the pieces that I've used uh, the wire jig on. Um, but I have a couple other pieces I want to show you. This guy here, I did, you can, you can kind of take a look at this and you can just tell, I can just tell, and hopefully now you can too, that this was done just freehand. I did not use a wire jig on this at all. And I mean, it turned out not too bad. You'll find that as you do these, if you do do them freehand, that, that it does get a little better and a little more uniform as you work. But you know, you see how sometimes like the lines aren't perfectly parallel to each other. Sometimes these bends aren't like totally uniform. Those just minor imperfections are what make this piece look not perfect, okay? Uh, this, I believe, is a seven single strand braid. When I say single strand, I'll bring this one in real close so you can see it maybe a little better. Um, this is a double strand braid. So again, I still have seven strands, but there's actually 14 wires in here because every strand has two two wires that I've used. Um, when you add multiple wires, you have to take a little bit of extra time to make sure that these don't cross. You see how they're all lying just nicely beside each other? all the way along as soon as they're crossing and then going underneath and in and out of the other wires this gets really lumpy really fast but because i've kept it all just nice and the wires are not crossing it's it's actually fairly flat it's actually not lumpy at all um, this is again just looking at this i can really tell that I have done this freehand. Now, my skills have improved between that other one and this one, but um, it's not perfect. You can just see, you know, my lines aren't perfectly uniform. So that's the difference between freehand and doing it on a jig. I will just point out, I've just got some store-bought, basically ribbon ends, these are called, and I've used some E6000 glue. So I basically took took the end of my braid and took my flush cutters and just cut it so it's exactly square across there. Took my E6000 glue and, and kind of glued and pinched these ribbon ends on. That gave me a little loop. I could add jump rings and extender chain. And that's it. That's my bracelet. So that's how I finished these two pieces. Um, when I made these two pieces, I didn't know exactly how much wire. So after I cut my ends off and made my bracelets the right length so that they would fit, you know, the average wrist, I actually had just a few little pieces left over, just just like an inch or two of each one. Oh, sorry, this ear hook's doing something. So I thought, well, I've got more ribbon ends because you can't just buy two of these. You have to buy a thousand of them when you order horse wholesale, at least. So I thought, well, these would make really cute little pieces in an earring. So I've got a loop on each end, one the top one I hooked the earring hook onto, and then the bottom one you can put whatever charm you want onto it. That other one was a moonstone, and this one I had these cute little frog charms. So there are lots of different ways to use this. I'm sure you'll take this braid and think of all different kinds of ways to use it that would never even occur to me, and I want to encourage that. If you have any logistical issues, you're like, I want to use the braid for this purpose, but I don't know how to attach it, give me an email. We can work through that problem together. There's usually a solution. It almost always involves some kind of jump ring or S hook or something like that. But if you're having trouble figuring that out, send me some photos. I'm happy to help. This is another bracelet that I've done. I'll see if I can get it to zoom in real close on this guy. This is a triple strand, seven strand bracelet bracelet. That didn't make much sense. A triple seven strand bracelet. That's what I wanted to say. So there's seven strands, but each strand consists of one silver wire, one twisted square brass wire, and then a copper wire. The copper wire actually looks black because it's been tarnished. Um, and then I, I wasn't happy, like I didn't want to use one of these store-bought end caps, so I took some silver plate, I hammered it, I cut it out, I drilled some holes. I actually made these little end caps they're okay. They are open on the ends. I did have to glue them on with that same E6000 glue. Um, this little this little piece here, there's another sharp bend right here and right here. So 
this wire goes down inside of here and bends. You probably can't quite see the end of the wire here, but it is there. And because I've got this shape, this kind of curved shape, if this was flat, this piece would be hinged and would move. But because I've got this curve here, this does not move and it's really solid and it just stays in place. But this piece here does hinge. The reason that this works so well as a clasp is not because this like has a whole lot of holding power, it's because the bracelet has some spring. Oops, hang on, that does come off of there. Um, so because the bracelet has some spring to it and it wants to pop open like this, that's why this clasp works, okay? Um, so that's it. I do have, I wanted to make another one of these, but uh, I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So this time I haven't finished it yet. I still got to do the ends, but this time I've got a silver, a twisted brass and a silver wire. So the whole thing just came out lighter. I did braid this one on the jig. It's pretty uniform. I'm pretty happy that all my lines are parallel with each other. All my corners look pretty uniform. Um, I just got to make my end caps and I can finish this guy off. I did do this hammering afterwards. I did braid this flat, but it does have this curve on it now. And it's because I hammered this into like a groove with a, with a dowel in the middle and, and just made this nice curved shape because I really like how this looks on the wrist. So that's my little crash course of different ways to use this. I hope you come up with like all different kinds of things to use this for that wouldn't even wouldn't have even occurred to me. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.